Hey guys, hope you're well. So in this lesson, we're going to be looking at. Um, so remember, in one of our in our previous lesson, we we looked at we came across discrete, and we also had continuous. And what we found was that with discrete, it's things that you can count, whereas with continuous, it's things that you would rather measure, like the the mass of a person or the, the, the height of a person, whereas when you're counting, you're just counting things like the number of cell phones or the number of a certain type of color car. Now, in this lesson, we're going to focus more on the discrete data, which is the ones that we count, and we're going to learn how to show that. Like, for example, if we're counting cars, we can show on a pie chart, for example, that maybe we have red cars, yellow cars, blue, and white cars. We could also show it on something called a bar graph, where you've got these bars. So, for example, this could be red cars, and then blue there's always a gap in the beginning and there's always a gap in between the bars when we're doing a bar graph. And then you could have, for example, um, white cars and then yellow cars, for example. So that's what we're going to look at in this lesson is how do we do a pie chart and how do we do a bar graph? Okay, I'm going to go into all the specific things that you need to know. So here is our first example. The learners in a school must choose which sport they enjoy. Enjoy. The results are as follows. Okay, so 10 people enjoy cricket, 15 um, rugby, and 11 enjoy hockey. Create a pie chart. Okay, when you think of pie chart, I want you to think of circle. Now a circle is how many degrees all the way around? 360. So remember that, we're gonna have to use 360. So the way that you do it is the following. What I want you to do is you're going to add these numbers together, okay? So you're going to add the numbers together, so 10 plus 15 plus 11, and that'll give you 36. So to work out cricket, um, cricket's percentage, you're going to take its number, divide it by the total, okay? And then just multiply that by 360. For And if you had to go work that out, you get 100, so that's going to be not a percentage, that's the degree. So when we use our, um, what is it, compass protractor, you know, it's quite funny, I teach maths, but I'm often forgetting about which one's which. I think, yeah, protractor, the one that does this, where it's got the degrees. Um, <laughs> it's always something I've forgotten, it's so weird. I've been teaching maths for so long, but yeah. Anyways, uh, rugby, rugby is going to be 15 out of 36 multiplied by 360. The 360 is because of this, that's always gonna be 360, but this number here is just the total of all of those numbers added together. And so that'll give us 150 degrees. And then the hockey, that would be um, its number divided by the total multiplied by 360, and that'll give us 110. Now, if you had to go add up all of these numbers, it's going to give you exactly 360 because we have to go all the way around. Okay, so now let's actually see how we're going to do this with a protractor now. So, so step one, you definitely need to draw a circle. The size of the circle doesn't matter. The bigger, the better, because the bigger, the there's a sound, isn't there? Um, <laughs> so um, the... Uh, the bigger the circle, the bigger you can make the circle, the more easy it's going to be for you to see. I mean, if you go draw a small little circle like that, good luck with your protractor. It's not really going to work so nicely. Okay, now we need to go get a protractor. Okay, so the next step would be go grab yourself a protractor and then use that to help you draw a circle. So I'm just going to go around the edge of here. Okay, I'm just going to flip it over and then just go and complete your circle. Of course, you guys would have a compass, right? Do it with a compass, but it's difficult to find a compass that works nicely on PowerPoint. So you would have a really nice looking circle. Okay. And so now we can start. So you put your little, um, you take the center and that, that'll become our center point. And we're going to do 100 degrees for cricket. Now you could start this way. You could start on this side, whatever you want. If you start on this side, then you start at the zero. If you start on this side, look for the zero. You always want to start at the zero. Okay, so I'm going to start on 
Actually, no, I'm going to start on this side. So I'm going to go from zero all the way up to 100 because cricket is 100 degrees. And so that's up to there. So remember, I started here. So I'm going to put a line like that. And then I went up to 100 degrees. There we go. So that will be my cricket part over here. Okay. Now, you got to be careful. This line over here is now going to be your new starting position. So you have to put your protractor on that line now. So it would look something like that. Okay. Now we're going to, let's just quickly take this line away. Now we're going to do 150 degrees, but now we're starting here at the zero and we're going to go to 150. So that is going to be over here. So there we go. So that would then be rugby. Now we don't have to go do any extra measurements because the last one, because it's the last one, if we've done everything correctly, it should fit into there and it would be 110 degrees. And so there's what you would have over there, okay? And so you could say here 100 degrees, 150 degrees, and 110 degrees. And then you could put a heading, that's always very good, and you could say pie chart, well actually no, you don't have to say pie chart. Um, the heading doesn't have to say what type of graph it is. What you wanna just do is say, um, the, uh, the learners in school must choose which sport they enjoy. Okay, preferred sport at a school. Okay, so always give yourself a heading and there we go. So that's how you would create a pie chart. So just remember, we're gonna do more in this lesson, but just remember you're always gonna use this 360, okay? Then this number is the total when you add these together. And then the number at the top is just what each one is, okay? So, okay, now we're gonna take the same example, but now we're gonna do a bar graph. All right, so a bar graph, you're gonna use a y-axis. Now, of course, you would use a ruler, okay? And you'd make it nice and neat, like that. Now, a bar graph needs three things. You wanna put a heading, so the heading will be um, preferred sport at school. Okay, your categories will go at the bottom. So this would be, um, you could say cricket, cricket, um, rugby, and hockey. Then on the y-axis, this would be your number of learners, number of learners okay so there's the and then here we should actually say sport so like what sport is it okay so this is the sport axis and then this is the number of learners okay now for the number of learners you get 10 15 and 11 so the best one would probably be to go up in twos two four six eight nine ten eleven twelve and then up to 12. oh no it goes up to 15. So the best would be three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. Okay, that works. Now, we always, because it's a bar graph, we're always gonna leave a gap over here. So maybe cricket will start there, then rugby, and then hockey. So you're literally just gonna go make a bar now. So for cricket, it goes up to 10, which is about there. So you're just gonna have this bar that goes up to there and then to there. Okay, but you would obviously do it with a ruler, nice and neat. Rugby goes up to 15. So now in an ideal world, this space and this space, they're all gonna be the same. So let me actually shift this up a little bit. So that would be about there and then hockey. Okay, so rugby goes up to 15. So that's gonna go up, 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 up to there and then down. So you see there's a gap in between. There's a gap here and there's a gap here. That's important. And then um, hockey goes up to 11, which would be like there. So we can just go up, 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 up to there and down. Okay. And so that is how you do a bar graph. You might, be, you might have seen other graphs in class where it's like this. Well, that is a histogram. That is something we'll look at in later lessons. That's when we are measuring continuous data. But in this lesson, we're doing discrete data. All right, we're gonna do one more bar chart bar chart, one more pie chart, and one more bar graph. 
The learners at a school are asked which transport method they use. The results are as follows. 10 taxi, 6 car, walk 6, motorbike 3, bicycle 5. Okay, so we're going to make a, a pie chart. So let's go draw a circle. And so, okay, so I'm just using the protractor to help me draw the circle. But you would obviously use a compass. Or you could even use a, um, you could even use the protractor. It'll actually work perfectly. I just can't really, it's not, you know what I mean. On a screen like this, I can't press into it the way you could if you are doing it on paper. Okay, and then let's go down like this. Down, 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 and around and around and around and around. Okay, there's my beautiful circle. All right, and then, okay, now we need to go get our values. So we've got um, taxi. We've got car, we've got walking, motorbike, and bicycle. All right, so remember remember what you do? Oh, that, that sounded weird, I said remember. Um, <laughs> so if you add these numbers together, so 10 plus 6 is 16, 22, 25, 30. Okay, so the total is 30. Um, so you can say 10 over 30 multiplied by 360 for this one. For the car, you'd say 6 out of 30 multiplied by 360. For the walking, same thing. Motorbike. And bicycle. Okay. And so if you had to go work this all out, we've got 120 degrees um, over there. 72. This one would also be 72. This one would be 36, and this one would be 60. Now, you can always double-check yourself. Add these together. They should add up to 360 degrees. I'm just doing my checks now as well. Yes, okay, so we've done it correctly. Now, we're going to start with taxi, 120 degrees. Now, you could start, um, I always like to put a line like this, or you put a line like that, and that's your starting line. So I'm going to start on the left side, and I'm going to go, so because I'm going this way, I'm going to use these numbers on the outside. I'm not going to use these numbers on the inside. I'm going to start at zero. I always want to start at zero. So I'm going to go to 120 degrees because otherwise you're just going to say, oh, there's 120 degrees. But that's not true. That's because you're starting at 180. So that's only 60 degrees, actually. So we start at zero and you go to 120. There it is. Okay. So that's the line that we want. Okay. So that would be um, taxi over there. Now the next one is 72, but now we need to position our, we need to position our um, protractor to let this be your new starting position. So you want to put your zero on that line now. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to measure 72, whoopsie. Now we're going to measure 72 degrees starting at the zero. And so we're going to go there, 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 there's 70 um, over here. So 75 is there. So 72 is there. Okay. So that's going to be um, your car. Okay, now we need to let this new line, that becomes our new starting position. So we need to put our protractor there now. Okay, so there's our new starting position. Now, obviously, I'm not getting it perfect, but it's a bit difficult here to do it like this um, on a screen. But once you've got it on a piece of paper and you've got a protractor, you could get it super, super accurate. I'm just showing you how to do it. Okay, so now we're going to go from the zero. You're always going from the zero, okay? And now we're going to go 72 degrees again. So there up to that line there. Okay. So there we go. That would be um, walking. Okay, next one is motorbike. So this line now needs to become the new, um, that needs to become the new starting position. Okay, now starting at zero, remember you always start at zero, so there it is. We're going to go 36 degrees. So 30 is here, 35 is there, so it'll be the line just after that one. Okay, and so that is our motorbike, motor bike, and then you could go do the calculations, but if we've done this correctly, then this should be about 60, and that would be a bicycle, bicycle. If you've done it all correct, the last one, usually, you don't have to go worry about that. And so there we go, should look something like that. And then obviously your teacher might want you to put the degrees, 120, 72, 72, um, 36, and 60. 
Now we're gonna take the same example, but we're gonna do a bar graph. So a bar graph, you need your y-axis and your x-axis. You need three things. You need a, ooh, we forgot a heading. Hoo-hoo. Okay, the learners at school are asked which transport method they use. Uh, so we can just say transport method used at school. Um, and then if they gave you the name of the school, you could put that. Okay, now um, on a um, bar graph, we need three things. We need the heading, so we can also say transport method preferred at school. Then we've got a y-axis, which would be, well, let's start with our x-axis, would be transport method. And then we're going to have, um, let's see if I can get this nice and equally spaced. How many? One, two three, four, five. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so then this would be taxi. This would be car, walk. I'm just gonna say motorbike like that. I know some people might be like, brew, it's mountain bike. But anyways, um, and then bicycle. And then, um, okay, now we're going, the highest one is gonna be a 10. Okay, so we're gonna go two, four, six, eight, and 10, and this is gonna be um, number of learners, number of learners. Okay, so the first one, taxi 10. Okay, so we're gonna go, remember there's a gap in between here, so we're gonna go like that over there. Then for car, there's gonna be, it's gonna be a six, so you must leave a gap. See, there's a gap in between, very good, that's a bar graph. And then um, walking is gonna be six as well. Motorbike is three, so that would be, uh, let's do that again, it's in between these two, yeah, something like that. Okay, and then bicycle would be five, which would be somewhere in between there. All right, and that is how we do a bar graph. So in this lesson, we've specifically focused on pie charts and bar graphs.